Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? My name is Tay, and welcome back to my channel, Inspire Me, where I talk about current or relatable topics, all from a godly perspective, and today's topic is called, They Fallen and They Can't Get Up. Now what prompted me to talk about this, I was looking at my calendar for something, and I saw that this month is LGBTQ, I think that's what, what it is, y'all. It's that month, God downloaded it in my spirit. I see somebody else talk about something as well, but it's like God gave me another revelation. I was thinking about like an elderly person falling down, and it's like, I put it on my, remember that commercial, when they say, I'm falling and I can't get up. That's where I get get that from. So when I say they're falling and they can't get up, I'm talking about the LG. I'm just say a little bit. <laughs> you feel me? I know that's not it, so don't come for me. Now uh, I'm gonna make this disclaimer like off real. I know that's not the only sin. I'm not just trying to pinpoint those people those people out. However, like I said, this is that month that they celebrate. So. I feel like God wanted me to speak about it, about different sin and different things. So like I said, I don't only just pinpoint that out. The reason why I want to talk about this too, because it's that month. I know a lot of people, you know, that's a little bit, they pretty much don't go all out this month because like, okay, this is my month. Same as it's your birthday. You know, not like everybody, but a lot of people, it's like, <laughs> you can't settle nothing on their birthday. I'm about to go out for my birthday. I'm about to throw it up. I'm a dude. He might be like, man, I'm finna buy the new bottles in the club, buy this flash this money up. It's like they go all out for their birthday. Not even just say birthday, for certain holidays, like we just passed Memorial Day. I'm pretty sure people was on a grill and with their family members and throwing a party and getting together and just different things. Like even with a lot of people celebrated their graduation, then they go all out for their kids, throwing parties, having little banners, fixing up and different things, inviting their friends and going all out by buying them new um things and different things they go all out so i'm pretty sure the little bits gonna go all out for this month so i go all out and pretty much relate this message too and like i said it's not to bash them or anything because at the end of the day like i'm not gonna judge nobody like i w i was never there but i had i was dealing with other sin and you know god still got dealing with me like with certain stuff like yeah, I, I get kind of mad easily. So, like, yeah, the God's still dealing with me with certain stuff. So, yeah, like, I'm not trying to, you know, point the finger. Now, the go to scripture that I actually want to use was going to be Proverbs 16. I'm going to be, read verse 5 and 18. 5 said, Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, no one will go unpunished. Now, if you look up proud, when I looked that up, I actually looked up pride because you know how some people say take pride in, in yourself you got to be careful with that because when I looked up pride it does mean self-esteem like you know take pride and your self-esteem how you look how you dress but are you having your self-esteem or is it God's self-esteem meaning like God can give you self-esteem to where you love yourself you think highly of yourself you know that you are worthy but it's based on humility and you know that God give and take it. However, if you just have your own self-esteem and you leave God out of the equation, that's how people become conceited. That's how people think they don't need God. That's how people pretty much rely on their own. That's pretty much where pride comes in at. So another definition was um, arrogance. And that's like I said, that's to be conceited and to think highly of yourself. But God says in his word that every proud and heart is an abomination to the Lord. It means like it's disgusting to God. And it says even though they join forces, they would they will not go unpunished. If you look at it, all the little bits, you know, what I'm talking about a lot of them join together. They sit together. It could be all of them again, ten people that's righteous, and it could be thousand of them. However, even though it's a thousand to ten, the word says they're gonna go unpunished. It might not be now. But at the end of the world, if they don't get it right, it's going to go unpunished. Their sin is going to go unpunished. All right, verse 18. Now it says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And like I told you, pride is pretty much arrogance. It's the same thing as being proud. 
That's why I don't like to use the word like I'm proud of you. I used to love to say that, and sometimes I still say it. And it's like I gotta catch myself. And I know nothing don't seem wrong with that. Like you know, I'm pr I'm proud of you. However, I just like be careful. Like I'm pleased with you, or I'm not saying it's a sin. And you can have the right motive, but I just be very careful with that word. And it says haughtiness comes with a, a haughty spirit before a fall. Haughtiness when I pretty much looked that up to be arrogant as well. And like I told you, pride meant to be arrogant as well. Also, too, uh, I forgot to say, another definition for pride was glory. Now, who are you giving the glory to? Yourself? But aren't you supposed to give the glory only to Jesus Christ? That's why I say, you got to be careful with pride. A person who's dealing with pride, they got to be very careful. Haughtiness comes with a fall. Arrogance comes with a fall. They fall and they can't get up. I'm saying that with the little bits. When I say they're falling and they can't get up, it doesn't mean that they're literally fell to the ground and they like a you know elderly person and they just can't get up off the ground. No, that's not what I mean whatsoever. That's from a nat natural uh, state with that. However, from a spiritual state, when I mean they're falling and they can't get up, I meaning they're falling in their ways, in their sin. They're falling in damnation. They're falling in the ways of this world, the the lies and inception of the enemy, thinking that just because the Congress or whoever the president signed off same-sex marriages and different things, that that's right. That's what I mean by they're falling. If you look at it from a, a worldly perspective, if an elderly person falls down, say for they don't have that chain, that life alert, and if they fall down, nobody's not going to know that they fell unless God automatically gives them strength and they get up they sell if somebody else is in that house with them and they see them lay on their floor. However, say friends they do got that lifeline around their neck. If they don't reach up to press that button, the help is not gonna come their way. They can have a lifeline on their on their around their neck all they want to day, night, the next day, the next night. If they don't reach up to press that button, no help is gonna come for them. They're screaming out, help me, help me. At the end of the day, I'm pretty sure the paramedics are not going to hear you. They're not going to come to your rescue unless you press that button for help. When I looked up what a life alert, like what does it do? What's the purpose of it? And it pretty much said it's a help button. Quickly access the situation in seconds and help is on the way. Now, if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, and Jesus is pretty much our help button. If you're in the Levites, if you cry out to Jesus Christ, he's your help button. If you cry out to somebody else, and or if you, even if you don't cry at all because you don't think nothing's wrong with that lifestyle that you're living, then Jesus can't help you because you don't think nothing wrong with them. They don't think they're in sin. Quickly access the situation. You know, if a person is a Levite, they're pretty much, you know, dealing with, you know, that spirit. So it's like... Jesus will quickly access that situation, whatever sin that you had, you know, prior to, and that you're dealing with now, God will quickly access it as long as you realize and you recognize that you need him, that you recognize that, okay, um, I've been sinning and I don't want to live this lifestyle no more. You recognize that, okay, this is not the life that God called me to. These are the lives of the enemy and I no longer want to be that person no more. The paramedic will come in seconds. When a person um, hit life alert, relatives don't come in seconds. They can, but they need a trained person, a paramedic, because they know what they're doing. The exact same way with Jesus Christ. If, you know, a little bit crowd to God and they need help, um, Jesus is going to come in seconds. If you try to cry out to a friend, a loved one, a relative, they can only give you worldly advice. And say, for instance, it is a godly person. They can do as much so much. They can pretty much lead you to the right path. But you still need Jesus Christ. Even if you get to that point where it's like, okay, yeah, I hear what this person saying, and I know I no longer wants to be that person. You still gotta access Jesus and accept Him. You can hear the word all day and say, wow, I understand what this person saying, and I no longer want to be that person no more. However, if you're not accepting Jesus Christ. There's so many videos, yeah, it's not going to work at all. 
Jesus will come in seconds. Once he knows that you're real, once he knows that you really want to change, once he knows that you're actually seeking him, he will come in seconds. And also, it lets you know that help is on the way. Jesus Christ is on the way. As long as he knows that you pretty much press that button, you pretty much crying out for help, you pretty much know that you're a sinner and you don't want to live in that lifestyle no more, help is on the way. Jesus is on the way to pretty much save your soul. I'm just trying to tell you something that was righteous because I don't want to see there's so many people that I know or that I you know I don't want them to die in a sentence like God kind of missed like you, you knew these people or you feel me you probably know the person but you know you could have uh, spread light you could have uh, made a difference and it's like I don't, I don't want the blood on my hand I don't want to talk about God so you can take it or you can leave it you know it's up to you but I just gotta relate this message are you the one that's falling and can't get up even if you're not dealing with that look to see if you got sin because you might be falling in that sin and you might say oh no I got control of it I'm okay sin is sin it don't matter if you just started a second ago it's still sin and if you keep on dabbling in it it's gonna get worse nip it in the bud right now call on Jesus Press that alert button for help right now. Because as long as you just got on your neck and you're not pressing the button, Jesus can't come to your rescue. They can't come and help you. Pyramids can't come and help you. If you just got on your neck. When God knows you're sincere and you're actually calling for help and telling him you want to change, okay, that's when he'll come. That's when he'll come to your rescue. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say regarding that, y'all. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel, y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. And I wanted to add, one thing this world going to do is take something that belongs to somebody else and use it as their own like they made it up. What I'm talking about, you know, with Pride, Pride Month, um, they utilize the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow, and just that symbol. Now, they took that from the Bible. If you look in the Bible, especially in Genesis, it talks about, you know, how God destroyed the... Um, earth with water and pretty much he made a promise that's what the bowl it says bowl but that's what it means rainbow that's what it stands for god made a promise that he would no longer destroy the earth with water that's what the rainbow is for however the pride they pretty much took those colors to represent you know for them no that's for the bible so pretty much what that tells me, we need to stop taking something that's pure and pretty much changing it to pollute it.